Hey everyone, I'm so glad you could join me. My name is Paul Adams, CEO and founder of Sound Financial Group, and I'm here to share with you a little bit about how to protect your portfolio from the coronavirus. It's easier than you'd think. You see, if you've been watching the markets at all, and certainly we've all been watching the news as to what's going on with the coronavirus, well, I'm not a vir virologist. I am not an MD. I don't know what the total impact is going to be on our daily life here over the next several months or so. But what I do know is what's happened in the past with markets and what that could mean for us and our portfolio today. You see, if you're watching the news, what you're going to notice is the S&P 500 in less than a week has dropped over 10%. And the Dow Jones Industrial Average is not much different. But if we're going to look at the future, we should probably look a little bit to the past and how the market has reacted over the last 40 years of these other market crashes and what we could do following disciplined approaches of the past to deal with the market volatility of today. But let's start by talking about what is a crash. You see, a crash is a significant dramatic decline across a cross section of the market. So we're going to look at a few of those recent crashes. And what we're also going to do is contrast that with what a disciplined approach did in the recovery of those crashes. So let's start with the most recent, the 2008 downturn as most know it, but what many people don't think about is it actually began in November 2007 and lasted 16 months total, giving the S&P 500 over a 50% decline. Now, that was pretty bad, but even though it was pretty bad, it got even worse because of how the media spoke about it Consistently and predictably, it was like there was going to be enormous food lines, like we were going to be back in the Great Depression. In fact, the quotes from 2008 in the media were of total disarray. So let's think about what would happen after that. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a very simple 60% stock, 40% bond, academically allocated, globally diversified portfolio in these rebound analyses. Well, that first year after, you might not have been very impressed. You were only up 4%. Three years later, you were up 12, but five years later, you were up 47%. Now, in all likelihood, you would have had about a 25% downturn in a portfolio like this one during the 2008 year specifically. And yet, we would have had these kinds of returns coming back from it. It doesn't echo of the lost decade, how we lost out were, was if we jumped out at the bottom due to fear. Now, if you're feeling afraid, don't hesitate. You can reach out to us even if you're not a client of ours. We want to do whatever we can to help people. And if that means helping you run a quick analysis of your portfolio and tell you or help you understand what's going on in there, we're happy to oblige and be able to help. Well, let's look at another one. How about the tech bubble? Lasted 22 months and the total standards and pores downturn was down 36.4%. Once again, the magazines and the media had terrible things to say, like it was never coming back again. This new economy isn't working out. And the NASDAQ dropped like 80% in the tech bubble. Now, many people had gone directly to all these technology stocks in an attempt to build their financial independence on the back of these technology companies. And for the most of them, it just didn't work out at all because of that steep and rapid decline. But with a disciplined approach, leaving that down cycle, the first year wasn't even wonderful. You were down 1%. But three years later, you were up 40. And five years later, you were up 81%. Let's look at one more crash and then we'll get to what this means for the markets and what you can do about it. You see, there's September 1987 to October 87 incredibly quick decline, often known as Black Monday. It only lasted two months, but the Standards & Poor's 500 dropped by 23.5%. And it was like the world had changed for everybody that day. And the quotes, again, were over and over again. This is terrible. It's not coming back. The world has changed. And by the way, the thing you're going to hear this time around also, this time it's different. Well, even though they said this time it's different, what were the returns like for that 60% stock, 40% bond portfolio? It was up 19% the following year with 40% fixed income, 33% in 
after three years and 76% after five years. You see, we can look at this similar analysis through some of the most major drawbacks our market has had. From left to right, you can see the October 1987 crash. And the October 1987 crash, we were up 76% five years later. In August of 1989, that's when the U.S. savings and loan crisis happened, up 61% after that downturn. We can go as far as August 2011 and the horrible news that we had been downgraded in our national debt, thinking that perhaps it would even drive international markets and oil off a dollar standard. Yet none of that really happened. And the reason a bunch of that didn't happen is because everybody tries to prognosticate and they try to call that thing that may be the most terrible outcome because those pundits take a great deal of pride in being able to say, see, I told you it would happen. So we have to take it with a bit of a grain of salt when we look at that. Well, here is a graph of all the major stock market downturns since the 1920s all the way through today and this chart gives you a sense of how much the market climbs after it declines you see the free market gives us an amazing ability to innovate for entrepreneurs to take action for people to find solutions and we get a chance to partner with them through our investment in the equity markets now none of this is guaranteed but what we do have is a good indicator of people's innovation and trust in the free market that those solutions will come and we may be going into a terrible market in fact there were no other indicators on the horizon that we would have any kind of significant pullback other than it seemed like things were going pretty well but what does it look like even during the year well if you look and this chart takes you all the way back to 1979 the t-charts those lines with the T's on the end, they're showing you how high the market went in any given year or how low it went in any given year. And this gives us a real sense of why we don't want to react to things happening in such a short horizon of time as less than a year. Because there's not one of these years where when the market was up really, really high, that it stayed there. And there's also not one of these years that any year the market went really low, that it finished that low. And I'd even call your attention to some of these years where it was really low at one point. Some of them are 20% down years. And yet that solid bar shows where the market finished that year. And even though it was 20% down at some point during the calendar year, it actually finished up in double digits. So what can you do about this? Well, one of the most important things that you can do is make sure you understand what your portfolio is doing. Now, again, we're happy to be a resource, share our philosophy with you, see if it makes sense for us to engage. But more importantly, if you feel like you don't have an understanding of what you're invested in or how it would behave, we've had a really great market for the last eight years or so. And that can cause some tranquility, maybe inappropriately, because we don't know the level of volatility that we embraced because we're all okay with volatility as long as it's on the upside. But truth be told, every time there's volatility in the upside, we may have a partnering volatility on the downside. And if we understand that going in, then we can make sure that we have a portfolio selected for us that we understand well enough that has a volatility that we can deal with so that we can weather things like what's gone on in the market this week. And for those of you that already have an academically allocated and globally diversified portfolio, you're already a client of Sound Financial Group, what can you do? Well, I would say just keep calm and rebalance because that's all that we can do. You see, if you were to take and say, okay, I'm just out, I'm running away, I'm cashing out, then not only do you have to cash out now, but then you have to go back into the market at a time when you think it's at the bottom, maybe, and in all likelihood, it's far too easy to miss. You can get out, try to get back in, and if you don't get back in at just the right time, you could be in a position that you literally lost more money because you waited until the market warmed back up. 
You see, in a case like this, if what you have is extra money on the sidelines, this is the time to put it back in the market. This is the time that you get the opportunity to buy some of these very same equities that you already owned on sale. And I got to tell you, I'm so encouraged by our clients who've reached out to me this week and said, can we put more money in? Because it gives them the opportunity to maybe get a little bit of a discount just because this is the way it happened. Now, these are not people timing the market. These are people that already had to make a defined benefit plan contribution or an excess cash in their business and needed to make that contribution. But for all of us, think about our investment time horizon. If you're watching right now, even if you're 60 years old with mortality rates now stretching people out into their 80s and 90s, you still have a 20 or 30 year investment time horizon. If you're healthy and you're a couple in your 40s, you may be an investor for another 50 years. 50. Which means this isn't the only down market you're ever going to experience. It just may be rapid and it may also have this extra tinge of danger simply because it's not being triggered by interest rates, it's not being triggered by international trade deals, but it's being by triggered that something that could affect us personally, affect our physical bodies and our health. And that's just going to set off your amygdala to react in a way that is in all likelihood not conducive to your long-term financial well-being. So as always, whether you're a client of ours or you might be considering that, do not hesitate to reach out to us. We have a scheduling link down here in our YouTube channel. You can take if you're watching this on another social media platform, you can direct message us. We'll do everything we can to get back to you. And all I wanna encourage all of you to do is to be thinking through with any of these actions, not by what's gonna feel good right now, but what are the actions that are gonna help you design and build a good life. Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed watching that video, tuning in. We love having you guys here. Don't forget to like that video, subscribe, and hit the alert bell. But by the way, if you just have questions and you want to dig in and learn a little more, go ahead and email us at info at sfgwa.com. Put yourself in the position to have a 15-minute phone call. I mean, come on. Can your current plans withstand a second opinion? If not, that might be the very reason to reach out.